I mean, yeah, they can definitely get bragging right just because of what they've won and what they uh, experienced. But at the same time, now since I'm in the final four of the national championship, I would have to say uh, bragging rights whenever I Right here in the front. Go back, guys. What was your first few years the big office. Is it a little frustrating? I mean, there's no great numbers in school. We're kind of waiting on the school. Yeah, like the first few years before that summer of your junior year. Yeah. Do you remember that? Um, yeah, so my sophomore year, I actually got hurt and wasn't able to play AAU. So I sat out the whole summer, and that was definitely motivated me just to get back on the court. Um, and I was hungry. Um, I was a competitor, and I went to my junior year just to go out and dominate anyone that's like I felt like that wasn't supposed to be ranked above me or you know, considered to be if I wasn't even in that conversation. So it, I kind of just you know still firing me uh, to bring that competitive nature, competitive spirit that I knew I had just to go out there and just kill. Um, and you know, from junior year to senior year, I definitely progressed uh, and improved every game aspect of my game. Just you know, staying down, remaining humble, and not really worrying too much about what's being said. What was it like when North Carolina got at the picture and made it clear that everyone talked to you? Um, so it was, uh, I think I first got to notice uh, it was like team camp. Um, Coach Davis had actually came down. He was playing at Malloy, and I was, I was playing really well. Uh, that's when he first started getting interest. And it was actually crazy because I was, I mean, I would never thought I would get some interest from North Carolina uh, just because of the schools I had already. But then, actually, when I uh, blew up um, my PG, that was a great. Uh, I, got, I got a phone call reward. They offered me. And then when I went down on campus to visit, you know, the guys welcomed me with open arms. And at my heart, I just knew like this was the right place for me. Right here in the middle. RJ, you've seen Caleb do his thing for a couple of years now, but here in the last few weeks, have there been a few moments where you just kind of think, man, this is a different level for Caleb, especially second half against UCLA and second half last night, and in particular the shot over Mark Williams? I mean, I, I knew this all along. Um, I knew he had that ability to uh, heat up real quick. Um, I think I've seen it uh, multiple times uh, in practice, in the run. Um, and at the same time, I think it's uh, us as teammates. You know, we've been able to find him when he's hot and tell him to keep going. Um, that's what we need. Is it comforting to have a guy that even when he's struggling, you're not going to worry about him because you know at some point the spark's going to be there? Yeah, I think it's comforting for all of us because it's not just Caleb that can do. I think it's all of us. You know, we have so many dynamic players from starting five to you know, the bench players that can all contribute in their own different ways. And I think that's what so makes this team so special. I mean, it, it's not just one player that just does it all. It's all of us. In the back. RJ, to keep growing up, do you remember watching the Final Four? Was it dream to be here in a moment like this? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I remember watching the Final Four. It was Marcus Page because he was like one of my favorite players growing up. Um, and watching North Carolina, and just to see you know their success and watch them uh, lose in 2016 and then come back for a year in 2017. Um, that was something that motivated me. And I wanted to be in that position and I feel that moment. Do you remember the 16 game? What do you remember about that game with Villanova when he hit the shot and tied and then? Yeah, Chris well, I remember Jenkins his Marcus is a crazy double pump three. Um, and then sadly, Villanova came down and hit that three. Um, it was definitely heartbreaking. Um, it was a moment that I, you know, kind of gasped for air because I wanted North Carolina to win because um, of Marcus. But it was definitely great to just actually watch as a kid. Over here in the left. Yesterday before the game, I saw one of your assistants or somebody on your team bring a tub of peanut butter onto the floor. Was I'm curious if you know what that peanut butter is for. I know Lee he said that he drinks pickle juice before the game. I didn't know if there's any, you knew what that Peanut was. Peanut butter? It was probably for Leaky, honestly. Um, I'm not sure. I, I didn't even think I remember that, but most likely it was probably was for Leaky. Did you drink anything or eat anything before a game? Um, a lot of water. Um, yeah. Right here? RJ, I got two different questions for you, one for Caleb and one for Armando. When it comes to Caleb, something that blew up on social media throughout the entire year was the Caleb Love experience. Whether he was having you know, a good game or a bad game, like that term just always came up. So I'm curious to know, as you, you being his teammate, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when, when you hear the Caleb Love experience? I would say confidence. Uh, you know, I 
know, there's a lot of people that have a lot to say. Um, it's crazy just because of, you know, we're still kids, we're still players, we're not going to be perfect every night. Um, so, you know, we always tell each other to not really listen to us, what's being said, just to focus on us as a team, and us individually, to be successful. So, um, you know, I'm super happy for him. Um, he's playing well at the right time at the high level. Um, and we always tell each other to keep going.